Welcome to the EXP group. Today we are discussing, we're continuing our discussion of ACCA paper F2 management accounting and the focus will be on absorption costing in connection with uh, variance analysis. Now in a previous discussion we had talked about uh, or had mentioned the fixed overhead absorption rate something which is specific to absorption costing. If we take um, some, some illustrative figures here, suppose we had budgeted normal production at a company of 1,100 units per year and fixed production overheads, which are based on experience, uh, equal $16,500. We could say that our budget, we can budget for fixed production overheads by finding the relationship between production overheads and the level of activity expressed in the number of units produced. In this particular case, $16,500 divided by 1,100 units gives us $15 per unit as our fixed overhead absorption rate. And this is a number we have seen um, included in a cost card for the full absorption costing method. Here it is, $15 in our per unit cost card. Okay, now that we've established the overhead absorption rate, we can keep track of overheads, of fixed overheads being incurred as we manufacture. So we can say that if we're absorbing overheads based on actual units produced, our actual output times the overhead absorption rate will give us our fixed overhead absorbed. Now let's move to basic variance analysis and use a numerical example in order to portray how the variance analysis is done. Have a look at the data here from a production company, which has budgeted production and sales figures and actual results. And we have to, uh, and a starting cost card to steer by. And based on this information, which is typical of a, an exam type question, the candidate will be expected to be able to put together a basic variance uh, analysis. Based on the numbers above, let's go through the uh, calculations that uh, achieve this, this uh, variance analysis. Let's start with sales. Let's look at the uh, sales-related uh, variances first, based on the underlying situation. We can see here that the sales uh, budgeted was 1,000 units and that sales achieved was 950 units. So here we have a volume related variance and another interesting thing here is that the sales price that was budgeted was $120 per unit but the sales price achieved actual results was 115 so we have a, a variance as well which is price related so we can say that the revenue that was achieved uh, or not uh, achieved compared to budget has two explanations two dimensions one dimension is volume and the other dimension is price. Now how do we separate out these two effects? That's where the variance analysis comes in. We have to follow a systematic way of explaining the differences. Let's start with the sales volume variance. Sales volume variance, we can say the budgeted sales volume was 1,000 units and the actual volume achieved 950. That means that we have what we call an adverse, that means a negative variance of 50 units. Now, there are two ways of reporting this variance in monetary terms. If we follow an absorption costing method, we should report in dollar terms the 50 units uh, adverse sales volume variance at the standard profit margin of one of the difference between $120 and the $87, which corresponds to 
total production costs per unit. In other words, what we're saying is $120 budgeted sales price minus the full production cost. That difference of $33 is a gross profit margin difference. And that is that $33 that we're going to multiply our 50 units by to arrive at a sales volume variance of $1,650, of course, adverse. Now, if we did the same calculation using the marginal costing method, the volume sales volume variance in number of units is exactly the same as before. We're just reporting it according to a, uh, a different system in monetary terms. In the marginal costing, we don't think in terms of gross profit margin. We think in terms of standard contribution. Now, the standard contribution, the candidate will recall, will be the selling price minus the variable costs. And in our case here, the standard uh, sell, selling price is $120 minus what are the variable costs. We go back to the cost card and we can see that the variable costs are $72. That would be the 87 less the $15 of fixed overheads. i.e. we have a standard contribution of $48 per unit times 50 units and so we would have a sales volume variance expressed according to marginal costing terms of $2,400. Now what about the sales price variance? Well we don't have a distinction to be made. Now the sales price variance is arrived at by taking the actual number of units sold, 950, and saying to ourselves they should have sold at $120 per unit, but they did sell at $115. So we've isolated the price difference here, multiplied by 950. These are the total dollar amounts, and the sales price variance, which is already expressed in monetary terms, is 4750 adverse. Now let's look at the uh, cost side of things, the material uh, variances. Now the materials related variances consist of two dimensions. One is the materials price variance and we'll see on the next page the materials usage variance. Let's uh, look at the parallel construction of what's being compared with what. In our example, we have materials used 4, 000, purchased and used 4,900 kilograms. Now, if we evaluate this from the standpoint of price, we could say to ourselves, okay, the purchasing manager has bought, for production purposes, 4,900 kilograms. They should have cost $9 according to the cost card. That's our standard, our budgeted amount. But the materials did actually cost, and here's the total cost in dollars. So the difference between what they should have cost and what they did cost is $925, and that is our materials price variance. It's adverse, you can, one can see, since the actual cost exceeded the budgeted cost. Now, let's switch um, perspective here and look at the materials usage variance. As though we were the production manager introducing those materials into the production process. Now, what the materials usage is based on output here of the 1,000 units that were actually produced. The question we should ask ourselves is, or the statement we can make from a budgetary point of view is that 1,000 units should have used 5 kilograms of materials. We can see that from the cost card. What was the actual result? Well, the 1,000 units did actually use 4,900 kilograms. In other words, we've done better than the expected uh, consumption, and therefore the materials usage variance in kilograms is favorable by 100 kilograms. We have to report this variance in monetary terms, and we use the standard cost of the material, $9 in this case, and therefore we arrive at a materials usage variance of $900 favorable. Our total materials variance is going to be the sum of the 
price variance, 925 adverse, and the usage variance, which was $900 favorable. Net, net, we have $25 adverse variance. Let's move along now and look at the labor variances, labor rate and the labor efficiency. We can see here the labor rate refers to monetary amounts. This is what we pay labor. And the efficiency uh, is talking about how fast labor works, and therefore the units here are in hours. Let's set up the parallel construction first with regard to labor. In the underlying data, then the scenario that we have set at the beginning of this example, we consume and pay 3,100 hours of labor. Now, that's, that's an established fact. That's actual usage of labor, and this is the basis of our comparison. So 3,100 hours should have cost, according to the cost card, at $6, $18,600. In the actual results, the 3,100 hours of labor did cost a little bit more than that, 19050 Therefore, we have a labor rate variance of $450 adverse. Now let's look at the other dimension with regard to labor. How well and how efficiently did they work? Here again, we take an output as our basis, actual output, 1,000 units, and we reason backwards and we say, okay, if you've produced 1,000 units, how long should that have taken um, our, our workers? Cost card says three hours. Therefore, we would have expected 3,000 hour, 3, hours to have been used. In fact, the actual was 1,000 units did take 3,100 hours. So in fact, we have a labor efficiency variance of 100 hours, and that is adverse. Expressed in monetary terms, we multiply it by $6, and we have an adverse variance of $600. If we add the two sub, we can call these sub variances, the rate and the efficiency variances, we come out to a labor total variance of $1,050. Let's apply the same logic now, the same systematic approach to variable overheads and the variances attaching to them. Now, one can see from the cost card, the variable overheads are determined by labor hours. So our labor overhead expenditure variance is going to be based on, is going to be driven by the actual number of labor hours uh, spent. We have what 3,100 hours of labor, and it should have cost us in overhead, variable overhead terms, three dollars per labor hour. That we can see in the cost card. You can verify that. That gives us nine thousand three hundred dollars. The three thousand one hundred hours did cost, in terms of our total variable overheads, actuals, $9,250. Therefore, our variable overhead expenditure variance was favorable by just $50. Remember, the units are already expressed in monetary terms since we're talking about expenditures. If we look at variable overhead efficiency, then we are piggybacking on the back of the labor efficiency variance. And we can say here, it's the same construction here. 1,000 units should have taken three hours to, to produce, i.e. 3,000 hours of labor. 1,000 units did take 3,100. So we have an adverse variance from an efficiency point of view of 100 hours. Now, for variable overheads, these 100 hours are reported in monetary terms at the standard $3 of variable overheads per labor hour. And therefore, our variable overhead total variance is $250 adverse. Finally, we come to the fixed overhead variances. And like the sales uh, variance, we have a separation or departure here, a distinction to make between absorption, costing, and
marginal costing. Let's begin with the fixed overhead total variance, which is unique to absorption costing because it compares the overheads actually incurred, $17,000, with the overhead absorbed, which will be based on 1,000 units actually produced times $15 or $15,000. We can see here that the difference is $2,000 adverse. One clue why this is unique to absorption costing is we can see here the overhead absorbed. This word gives away the fact that we are speaking of absorption costing. Absorption is not known to the marginal costing method. Now, notice further that the 2000 um, fixed overhead total variance can be broken down into two components. One is one is the fixed overhead expenditure variance, which is based on the budgeted overheads, which should have cost $16,500, and the actual overhead cost, which was $17,000. Had we stuck to or achieved 1,100 units of production, we would have uh, been able to budget and calculate at 16,500. The actual 17,000, this difference gives us the fixed overhead expenditure variance of $500 adverse. The other component is the fixed overhead volume variance, which again is specific to absorption costing. Here, the budgeted production was 1,000 units. The actual production was one. Sorry, the budgeted production was 1,100 units, and the actual production was 1,000 units. There is a difference here of 100 units adverse, because we produced less than we had budgeted, and this adverse variance is going to be reported at the standard fixed overhead absorption rate of $15 or $1,500. Notice that when we add together these two sub variances, 500 adverse plus 1,500 adverse, they equal the total variance of $2,000 adverse. So there is consistency here and a reconciliation. Finally, the interpretation of variances. This is a qualitative aspect where the candidate is invited to consider what drives favorable and adverse variances with regard to materials prices, materials usages, and equally important, what is the interconnection between variances here? If one were to use, for example, substandard materials and therefore achieve a favorable variance on price, but because they are substandard, we end up with an adverse usage. We have to use more of the substandard material in our production process. So there's actually quite a lot of important and interesting connections that one can make uh, in interpreting the variances. So remember, calculating the variances is only the first step towards analyzing and interpreting the outcome.